Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. My name is Layla and I'm happy to have you here with us. Before we begin, let's take a moment and pray. Lord, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for the smiles on all our faces, Lord, and the joy in our heart, Lord. We thank you that we can enjoy ourselves in your presence, Lord, that you give us that good laughter, Lord, that's like medicine to the bones, Lord. We ask that you'll also give us your wisdom and your understanding, Lord, because... There's nothing that can match that or surpass it, Lord. Mm -hmm. So we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, and we thank you for this time in the Word together. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. We are excited to have you with us as we dive into the Word, continue our study in Hebrews. We're in chapter 10, covering verses 1 through 10. So if you're joining us for the first time or rejoining us, the instruction, if you will, the recommendation is the same to pause the episode and take the opportunity to read through that section of scripture just so things are easier to follow along in the discussion. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. And as is our custom, the floor is now open to give each of you the opportunity to um, share what Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you and or to ask any questions that you have. So who'd like to begin? I would. All right, LaCharles. We left off inside the last episode talking of, um, talking about how what we see here is that they haven't destroyed the temple yet. It's about 10 years until they will actually destroy it. The Romans will. And Dad, she had brought up the question about how is it possible that if the temple was so important, the animal sacrifice is what, is what made them who they were and allowed them to get into heaven. How have they been able to do so these past around 2000 years right yes how have they been able why, to do why so? was it not a has it not been a concern for any of the their friends and family in the lineage these last 2000 years but also for themselves today because there is still not yet a third temple and even then the third temple is for what the temple itself was for the, or the tabernacle the tent of meeting back in Moses time was for the animal sacrifice so Wait, that, that's not even a concern or has not been a blip on anyone's radar. So further demonstrating or highlighting, it is the blood of Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, which has paved the way and yes. made them and us white as snow without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. It's his blood. Yes. And I would like to speak on that briefly because the Lord just brought this to remember my remembrance also what we see here is that in the book of hebrews he's beginning to um cause their faith to grow but also demonstrate how jesus fulfilled all these things how he was the great high priest and we know that um the reason why the temple was destroyed is because they decided to take things in their own hand the jews did they decided to try to push the romans out by themselves and do it without god Mm -hmm. and the lord was just remind me that they were trying to um, promote their own Messiah, try to be who they thought the Messiah was going to be. And this is, Mommy, something you talk about often, how they thought he was going to be a hulking man with huge muscles. Another and Samson, a, warrior, a David, yes. or a Joshua, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yes, and how they thought he was going to be all but born, ready for warfare. That's that's <laughs> that's how they thought of him, that he was going to be knee-high to a grasshopper and swinging a sword around and dealing with people. I don't really, I don't know if they even had that concept in their mind. They just thought he was going to be there. Yes. And um, they were just looking for him. Uh, Whether he showed up um, by just appearing or if he was born like Samson was born, Josh was clearly born. But either way, to to um, come and be established as a warrior to rid their enemies and establish Mm -hmm. them, if you will, as uh, at the pinnacle. In, in leadership to rule. No, again, not the Lord ruling, but as a people ruling. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yes. So, so let's understand that. Yes, and how they were trying to take things in their own hand, which nicely correlates inside of what is being talked about in the first verse, that the things that we as humans can do does not sanctify what the Lord has made. 
Amen. We're not the one giving the Lord his power and saying, okay, Lord, we'll give over what we have, Lord, so you can be all powerful and supreme. That's not how it works. He's God without us, meaning that he doesn't need us as humans to validate and say, you are God inside of our lives in order for him to be God. That's kind of like how you, mommy and dad, don't necessarily need us to say you're our parents to know that you are our parents because mm-hmm. we have come from your bodies. That mm-hmm. That's just a fact of the matter. Mm-hmm. And that's just known. Well, but then also, right, and, and, and I'm going to say this for two reasons, right? One, because, yes, you, you've come from us. We have raised you, right? But then also you as our children, right, or we as children of God, I should say, or I'm speaking to, using y'all as an example. But then for the broader picture for all of us to to be able to see and understand, there is a, as children of God, we have an inherent responsibility to follow his commands, his instructions, right? The, the laws, the boundaries, the things that he has set in place and established for us that prove or demonstrate that we are children of the Lord Most High, right? <clears throat> now, if we misunderstand something as his children, what are we then doing if we are in opposition? Well, that that is being taught now to the other children, our siblings, our brothers and sisters in Christ, in the Lord, right? Yes. So uh, I say all that to, to also say this. In what we're discussing and in the question I asked is not to condemn anyone, not to condemn Israel. They are absolutely our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yes. Right? They are are the first, well, I'll say Christ is the firstborn, mm-hmm. right? but they are an older sibling and, are, and mm-hmm. as such are given a place of honor. An oldest sibling does not always get it right, okay? But then yes. as a result of that, because the rest of the siblings are watching, mm-hmm. there is then the opportunity now that the rest of the siblings also make similar mistakes and or that they also have the opportunity to correct that and say, oh, this is where my older sibling got off track. But as a result of that, I, I can choose to not make those same mistakes and have a more perfect course with the Lord, mm-hmm. right? It's, yes. a, it's yes. a difficult place to be in that of the firstborn. There's a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of groundwork that's laid. There's a lot of, if you Trial will, and error right, on their right, part. On, on, right, exactly. Wait. So, mm-hmm. but understanding that, go, okay, I see how things go in the fruit of those attitudes, actions, and behaviors in their life, Mm -hmm. of being disobedient, of misplacing or misunderstanding the words that were spoken by the parent, right? So so again, this is not to condemn Israel. It's not to condemn any one of us. It's so we can understand, and now we can change our heart toward the Lord, right? Uproot those things in our life that don't reflect Him, His nature, His character, His attributes, and move forward in him. Yes. Which transitions nicely into what we see here. For then will they have ceased to be offered for the worshipers once purified have no more consciousness of, um, have had no more consciousness of sins. And in your example, Dev, talking about how the siblings are watching, I know from my own experience as being a younger sibling that I watch to see what the other people have done, what the two before me have done. Mm-hmm. Not always is it with good intentions, I might add. Right, of course. Right. And just understanding here as well that the Lord is um, talking about how they've seen what their parents have done. Meaning that... Uh, and the generations before them. Yes. These people, um, the Jews at this point, they had a misunderstanding of what actually had occurred. But the Lord is also revealing to them is that while your fathers did receive the tabernacle, that's part of the reason the Pharisees held on to it. Um, we see that, I believe it's um, John, where they said, well, we received the tabernacle from Moses. I think they say that. Um, mean that Moses got the instructions on how to build and that's why they're doing it. But the Lord was saying, hold up. Why are we trying to signal and bring the presence of God ourselves, like trying to handle him in the regard of we are forcing God to be here with us in Jerusalem. Instead of understanding that the Lord does as he pleases and being open to that. Well, but also, what was the Lord's desire from the beginning? That he would be our God and we would be his people. Okay, and that he would live and dwell among us. 
Yes. But yet, many are trying to bring the Lord down to them. Mm -hmm. As instead of going, Lord, you're invited. Come on in. And this is your place of honor. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming to you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you're welcome here. Instead of just welcoming the Lord, your people are trying to force the Lord to come. When he's already said throughout all the generations, I desire this. I desire to be among you. Yes. And he does. He For those that have chosen him, or as as you just stated, right, who he's our God and we're his people, which is the covenant, his will, his plan, his purpose, and the destiny track for each and every one of us, those... He, for those ones that have entered in to his covenant, he lives and dwells in them. The fullness of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Yes. And when we understand that, that we are supposed to be meeting the Lord, and if I mean like this, meaning that what we see with Abraham when the Lord was going to Sodom and Gomorrah to go check it out, it said Abraham went to him. Hmm. Meaning that the Lord didn't come to Abraham in the regard of he walked over and Abraham was just lounging around and saying, yeah, what do you want, Lord? It's not mm-hmm. like that. And that's what we have to understand as well is that we are to meet the Lord. We, we are supposed to draw near to God. Mm-hmm. He's already doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's not changed that. Mm-hmm. Meaning that he's not the person who runs from him. It's us who move away from the Lord and the Lord's just standing there. Mm-hmm. Um, and understanding that when we draw towards the Lord, then we'll truly be able to understand what's actually going on but like, not not just drawing towards him but staying connected and yes. in divine fellowship christ did not break or sever his connection he said i know you always hear me yes so what does always mean always, always. so that wasn't there was a continual always re- presiding and residing connection not something he put up and picked you know put down and picked up when he went back to the syn- synagogue he suddenly was connected to God and then when he went home he was disconnected or you know he was always with connected with the father yes and as we and as you said mommy we have to be connected with the Lord always meaning that what we see here and another thing that the Lord was talking to them about is that sorry mommy (laughs) meaning that they have been going in once a year that's how the only time they could do it once Mm -hmm. a year but then they still had the understanding of what they had done wrong during the year we know nobody's perfect Mm -hmm. meaning that when we're in fellowship with the Lord always, which we have now, is we should be perfect towards him always. Meaning that the Lord does understand that we're going to make mistakes, but there's a difference between being willful and understanding, looking it in the eyes and saying, okay, I'm going to do that. There's a difference between that. Mm-hmm. And that's what we also see here is that He, the Lord is saying, don't get drawn up on the one day that you can do this. Come to me always. I'm not just here one day. Meaning like you and dad aren't just our parents one day of the year and we go off and do our own things every other day. Right. Um, the apostle here is, he's making great lengths to say this is better. Yes. This, what God has done, what he has brought forth now is so much better because they didn't wait till one time a year. They had to bring sin offerings and cover offerings of various coverings throughout the year that yes. that oh. happened. Um, but the the one big one that took care of the nation was... Yeah, um, before the, the the one big one for the entire nation, but they still had to do their individual activities of bringing sin offerings. Any as, and every time they sinned or transgressed, needed. exactly right. And that's only if they were the most pious of the most pious, because that's sometimes they had to journey and things like that. So the the bigger thing to take away from this is to not put your eyes on natural things and cling to them because they're convenient, they're familiar, whatever they are, but to keep your eyes on Christ Jesus, because he is the way, the truth, and the life, and the Father only wants our good. Layla, did you have something you wanted to say, sweetheart? I did. LaCharles, are you finished? Yes, he is. He is for now. Well, the thing that I wanted to mention about chapter 10 and something else that that the Holy Spirit through the apostle is writing about is that we need Jesus. We need all that he is and all that he's done for us to be successful. And I'd like to read something to you from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'll start in verse 15 and end 
at 21. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole uh, were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. And why am I reading that? And it's to, to examine ourselves and to look and go, are we trying to be the head? If we're all, you know, the head, where's the rest of the body? Mm-hmm. A head floating around is creepy and it should not be. There should be limbs attached to it. But if we try to cut the Lord out, because should the body, us, his church, his people go, I have no need of you, Jesus, get out of my way. Mm-hmm. And be a body with no head on it walking around is wrong as well. So we can't cut the Lord out of the picture. We shouldn't try to cut the Lord out of the picture because just how the the actual body works, the head sends the, the electro, the electronic impulses to the rest of the body to make the heart beat, to make the lungs, lungs contract and pushes the, the blood around so that all of the limbs are getting what they need. So the Lord Jesus is giving those connections, giving those instructions so that each one of us is getting what we need and we should be in divine alignment so that we're also supporting the others around us. Every time we try to step out of line, and I also believe this is what the Apostle Paul is talking about with the animal sacrifices, every time we step out of line and try to institute what we think is best, we cause harm. And in our attempt to do good, we do not do good. And then the Lord has to come and has to not only dig us out of the pit, but others that we've caused to stumble around us. So it's important that we move in our in season and in step with the Holy Spirit and the Lord and his leading so that the body functions as it should and all is accomplished, you know, um, as much as depends on us, we are not creating more work for the Lord to fix, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Amen. Um, and something that... Uh, in the scripture that you referenced there, where it talks about the eye and the hearing and the smelling, all of those features are located on the head. So it's a little bit misleading, the not misleading as in it's sinful, but for the head is complete. Christ is the head. But oftentimes we as believers, we try to inject ourselves into being, I'm Christ's eyes. I'm, I'm his mouth. I'm his nose. I need to dictate to the head what to do. I'm located on the head as part of the head, it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit in me calling the shots. And then we forget that we are the, actually the part in the earth. Yes, there may be prophets, there may be apostles, and we speak by communicating in the earth. But in actuality, you're not positioned physically in the head to be the second eyeball for him or the brain thinking. <laughs> you're positioned down with the hands and the feet and the legs and the, the work part of the body of Christ. So typically when we try to position ourselves in an elevated perspective, that's when we start crumpling and stomping on or, everybody else. Or the central nervous system or the red blood cells or what, what's, right, all those things that, that are active and functioning. Mm-hmm. We start getting out of alignment because it leads to thinking that we're more important <laughs> than we are. And we all want to be important. We all want to be special. We all want to be loved. We all want to be valued, all those things. And, um, have some place of or some esteem of value bestowed upon us. Well, the value is Christ died for you, right? But he's, the head is complete. Mm -hmm. The body is here in the earth. We are Christ's body. Head is in, he's the head, the leadership, but he's the eyes, he's the hearing, he's right. He's, he's all of that. He's got that completed and we should make sure we keep that. We are under him. We are in him, sure, but positionally, he's above us, right? Even though he welcomed us to be joint heirs, but I could never sit in his seat in his place. That would not be acceptable. I can sit with him, right? But not instead of him. So just keeping that um, proper humility, not elevating ourselves to the head of the table, going, "I'm, I'm an eyeball in the body of Christ. I'm the mouthpiece of the whole body of Christ. I'm important. Elevating ourselves. Mm hmm and allow God to use us however he sees fit. Amen.
Uh, and nor can, uh, do I believe we can be the heart. That's his heart, right? He is We're the supposed life to be exactly. He is the life source. So we can be in tune with the heart. Mm-hmm. We need to be in tune with the Lord's heart mm-hmm. and, and pumping and moving, or I'll say functioning as is required as he's dictating by what matters to his heart. Mm-hmm. And it's those that are functioning in their rightful place and properly that are the ones that are recognized and noticed, right? Because in the example that Paul gives and uh, you brought up in the body, the, the most important thing changes moment to moment in the body with what's needed at the time it's needed, mm-hmm. right? Yes. So it changes all the time. And yes, there are many members that are not seen, are not visible, but they, it does not that they do not hold value and or that they have a less important role than anyone else. It's just a matter of what's needed, when it's needed. But also, are you positioned in line with the Lord and with his heart and what he as the head is dictating to have happen for what's needed in the moment? Amen to that. So, we're going to pause there for today. And with that, can I get a volunteer to close us out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we thank you that you're the head of the body, Lord, and that you are the one who tells us what to do, Lord. And we thank you for the opportunity to come into alignment with you, Lord, and to fulfill the role that you've given each and every one of us, Lord, in excellence, Lord. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your kindness. We ask that you will shed abroad your your love again in our hearts, Lord, so that we are able to reciprocate it towards you and to others, Lord, as we go throughout our day, Lord. We ask that you give us skill and understanding in the work that we're doing, Lord, whether we're learning a new concept in school or we're learning a new skill for a job, Lord, that you would give us wisdom and al- Open the opportunity for us to minister to others your goodness, Lord, that they are able to hear and experience your love for them, just as we have had the privilege of hearing and experiencing your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry inspiring messages and coupon codes for the merch shop visit our website adayofprayer.org click on connect in the menu bar and complete the form be sure to check the box that says subscribe thank you for listening to a day of prayer we trust the lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with christ Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.